I am going to deal with a module from the course Communication and Extension from the sixth semester of the Science program. The topic for discussion is Reason, Reason, Extension, Communication. In this particular session, I will be dealing on the objectives, importance of communication and extension, information communication tools and techniques used in extension activities, and additional reading and references. So the basic objective of today's session is to give the learner a practical insight on the use of various communication technologies in carrying out extension activities. As we all know, what exactly is extension? Extension is a lab to man program which deals with the dissemination of scientific findings to reaching the unreached. The unreached can be a tribal population, a village, or a rural population, wherever it is, which is away from the mainstream of the society. So the basic philosophy is to bring about desirable changes in the knowledge, skills, attitude, understanding, and belief of the population, thereby improving the standard of living and ensuring better quality of life for the people. Extension also aims to help the people to understand and identify their unfelt needs into felt needs. So this process has to be carried out by a specific trained person who can be known as an extension worker or an extension agent. Sometimes we call it as a social worker or a community worker. Whatever be the terminology, the basic quality that they require is to have proper communication skills. And communication, as we all know, is a process of transferring message from a source to the receiver. It is a conscious attempt made by a person to express himself or herself. It involves interchange of thoughts and ideas from a source to a receiver. This we can call that communication is a central part of the central to the study of extension. Communication is a way of expression of one's own behavior, knowledge, and now let's discuss about the importance of communication and extension. As I said earlier, communication is a vehicle for transmitting or disseminating scientific facts to the unreached population. As we all know, they are fully loaded with lots of sources. It is very difficult for an extension person or a change agent to bring such desirable changes in them. Hence, both Communication is very essential to analyze them and to make them believe about what exactly is happening in their day-to-day -day life. And also, communication is essential for the adoption of innovation. Innovation is finding and creating something from nothing. And adoption is the process of accepting that particular thing, that particular innovation into practice. Communication also ensures quick delivery of information. It also gives better understanding of the situation. The proper communication is also essential for creating interest among the target group. Our target group, while doing an extension activity, may be heterogeneous. We cannot expect a homogeneous group. So, creating interest among the audience is highly important. Seeking people's participation in developmental activities is very important. As we all know, the issues that we that is coming close now, that we are facing now, the COVID 2019, the Kerala flood, the Kerala Delhi 2018, everything we can see the involvement of the people, which really was the success behind managing all those such issues. activities is very essential, which means proper communication from the change agent. Here, we call extension worker as a change agent. Now, what are the areas where we need people's participation? 
to evaluate the programs and policies offered by both the central and state governments, to assess the consequences of the program, whether the program has been reached to the final beneficiary properly, whether the objectives or the targets of the program set were met properly, whether anything is needed for reconsideration. So all these things can be done through proper communication. So then it, it also brings in new ideas, knowledge, attitude towards a target group. So in fact, an extension agent with better communication skills can highly motivate or influence this target audience. So coordinating with the stakeholders and the public on developmental issues is also really essential and means better communication. Now, let's have a look on the methods of communication in extension in general. We all know that there are basically three methods for communicating. Individual method, group method and mass method. And individual methods, we can see examples like personal letters, telephone conversations, and meeting the farmer, making a home visit to the farmer are some examples of individual methods. And group methods comprise of group meetings, small group discussions, couple group discussions, um, using audiovisual aids, etc. Mass methods we you know creating for a wider coverage of audience, meaning mass media, the support of mass media conducting programs on a larger scale, etc. So, keeping all these methods of communication in view, we are going to look into the recent trends in communication, which can be adopted for better communication and extension activities. Here comes the role of communication technology or ICT in extension. So, ICT is simply Technology or an umbrella of term of technologies that provide access to information through telecommunication. It is an electronic and digital technology, right from radio to robotics. Enable data far from places and funds the process of data collection. Here I would like to talk you an example. Like recently, during the lockdown period, we must have received lots of online Google submission forms asking for data on different surveys. So see the different or see the impact of ICT which can have a positive impact on creating the data collection for the researchers. We recently had conducted a study during the lockdown period on the eating habits of the people. The survey was carried out for a 72 hours period and it was it's interesting to note that around 523 responses were generated in a short span of 72 hours, which is quite impossible in a normal data collection process. So what happened is, apart from India, we received data from five more countries. So I think is the best example for how it can be reached to a wider audience. Easy connect between researchers and public. Again, I should quote the example of the COVID management and the deluge of 2018. We remember the deluge of 2018 where social media teams are very important in managing the issue, how the public got connected with the government agencies, government authorities, the administration, and how how very easily. We coordinated and managed the resources of our state. So, it plays a very important role in connecting with the community. So, information dissemination without gender bias is something very crucial at this moment. Like, whenever we talk about some issues in our country or in our state, we always go for gender sensitizations or gender biased prejudices. So, ICT is one such tool where which will not focus on a particular gender. It can be a male, a female, or, a, or another population. Whoever has the availability of information, communication technology, whoever has the access can have it without any gender bias. 
So in short, I can simply tell that it's a real-time communication. As we all are living in the world of digital technology, it's a real-time communication which connects the globe digitally. That is the main importance of ICT in carrying out extension activities. Now, when we talk about ICT, we always uh, get confused with them. So I can simply uh, discuss them in two ways. Like we have ICT tools and we have ICT techniques. When we on the ICT tools, ICT tools are something that we use to do a particular job. For example, now I am taking an online class. The tool which I am using is a laptop and an internet. So computer, laptop, internet, websites, web portals, can be some examples of ICT tools. Mobile phones, similarly, smartphones, tablets, call centers. If you are in a college or in interactive whiteboards are used for sharing information, communicating better to the students for creating interest and desire among their learners. An expert system, which I'll be discussing on the next slide. Interactive voice response systems. You must be very much familiar with the female voices that you hear when you use the GPR as navigation system. The Siri, Alexa are all examples for interactive voice response systems. And the touch plan information kiosk. I'm sure that all of you must have seen an information kiosk in your lifetime now. You must be seeing information kiosk, seen in the form of until uh, speaking in corners or in the main places where there is maximum crowd. And you can also see information flows being available in railway stations to give you the data regarding the uh, railways, the data regarding the trains, the departure time, the scheduling times, everything. So, and touch screens are also similar to that. When we have display TVs and screens widely being available across the places for giving specific information, at least we must have seen displays of TV screens of for particular cricket schools or during a tournament is happening or something. So such tools can be used for carrying out extension activities in the community as well. Since we are dealing with the extension in agriculture and rural development and the role of ICT in agriculture and rural development. Like I said earlier, information related to the center according to the land can be easily be possible with the uh, introduction of ICT in this field. Similarly, the town management of the old cropping activities. We must have seen the Kisan call centers, probably numbers being displayed on uh, or being aired on the TV channels as advertisements to call on a particular number and get the details about the particular pulse or the crop that we are cultivating. So, these are all the advantages of ICT in the field of agriculture and rural development. Uh, in this particular slide, you can see a, a small shot of a mobile application developed by IIT Kanpur and BSNL together, which aims to provide current rates of crops to farmers so that they can choose suitable time and market to sell their crops for maximum. So, this is one form of uh, digital media being used in the TV for the agricultural production. Most of these techniques, including marketing, can be made possible. Setting up of farm specific agro advisory services, weather forecasting, climate change, water stresses, heat control management, use of drones in agriculture to identify specific problem specific um, sports, quality numbers, as I said earlier, then online pest management systems. When I talk about online pest management system, I would like to show you one slide on the Kerala Government Department of Agriculture, Development and Farmers Welfare has developed a crop pest surveillance system. And I think you need this crop pest surveillance system management system to which you get this in collaboration with IIT and um, Kazagoda. So, what they have uh, 
done is that see, this will help us to get connected with the scientists of the research in the agricultural university or on the research stations so that they can clarify their doubts immediately with a single stage. And similarly, ICT and Kerala Agriculture has done a bilingual agriculture portal, which has been uh, launched by the Kerala Agriculture University, uh, the shelf of agricultural knowledge and information system by the Center for E-Learning, which is known as Krishi Jalagam, which you must be familiar with. The portal is available in both Malayalam and English version so that everyone can uh, go to it and their accessibility is higher. Photograph which I would like to share with us. I'm sure that everyone has seen this. The Kerala is the only uh, Indian state which has an information kiosk that has just come South, South Korea recently in the COVID management situation. In Kochi, one of the hospitals has adopted this and they have started uh, checking the people about screening the people on the COVID management system. Now, about the expert system which I discussed to earlier, it is a computer system that emulates the decision making ability of a human expert. It comprises of a branch of, a branch of artificial intelligence that uses knowledge and problem solving techniques. It is designed to solve complex problems by reason, the body of knowledge represented by it, then reads, that and conventional procedural approach. So it's simply it will be a group of experts from all the fields. As you know, an extension worker alone cannot handle all the issues being happening in the field or in the farm or in the community sector. Especially when it comes to agriculture, which is a core of our country, where majority of the population lives of basically from the sources of agriculture. So an extension worker and, uh, alone cannot handle the situation when the problems arise. So he has to be with the subject experts in many areas to solve the issues. So, so they sit together, identify the problems, and on each stage of that particular, for example, production or cultivation of a particular crop, they design the products in such a way that at this stage of the production will have an approach to it. And it will be clearly handled by this expert system. It comprises of three things a digital support tool, a community knowledge tool, and an automatic control. So these three together work in the community and they will get a database uh, designed to pull the accumulated knowledge of one or more domain experts together at a time. So this is a wonderful tool uh, being used across the country. And especially, it is being benefited to large scale farmers alone. Let's come to the techniques in ICT. Earlier, I was talking about the ICT tools, and now we come to the techniques. Techniques are the procedures used to accomplish a particular task or activity. It can be email, internet telephony, voice over internet protocol, Wi Fi, WhatsApp, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and the so called all social media, GPRS, conference calling, e-learning, teleconferencing and video conferencing, remote sensing technology, and finally not the release, last but not the least, the podcast, broadcast, blogs, shows, etc. Let's have a discussion on each of the Use of emails in the next and Wi-Fi. We all know what exactly is an email, isn't it? Electronic means for exchanging messages between people using electronic devices. I would like to uh, take the extension students to think back about the traditional communication method that we used for connecting the farmer in the community. We used to write personal letters or uh, make the farmers call personally for getting attention, individual attention to the farmers. And sometimes we give multiple circular letters to the farmers to give them a particular announcement that something is going to happen in their village or the nearby community regarding their crop or pest management. When the digital era has come, it has been replaced by multiple emails. And internet, 
a global wide internet network that connects computer systems across the world. And VMOIP is a voice over internet protocol, a technology that allows people to once call these a broadband internet connection other than a regular phone call. We can have conferences um, with multiple number of uh, contacts and it is also being possible for connecting the villagers of the community. And one side is wireless networking, which we all are familiar with. It's also a powerful tool in this world of digital era. When we talk about borders, so the new media and the so called social media, it is very interesting to see the work that Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts being used very effectively and powerfully for reaching the community. I can give you some examples. You can uh, see the first photographs of my slide. This is a WhatsApp group being created by Inhat Bharat Adhuan, Regional Center of Kerala, in Kilandran, ISA. Uh, the description is that it is made exclusively for the participating institutes under this particular program for better communication and to share relevant information. You can see that around 97 participants are coming under this particular regional institute and they share photographs, messages, and events happening in one particular participatory institution so that the, all the others can have their own views, replicate, and adopt whatever is best suitable for them. So, creating WhatsApp group to the villagers or to the target group is a very good op option for connecting to the villagers. You might also have been uh, familiar with lots of local groups of boutiques in our city. So I, I have come across a few boutiques who are really keen in meeting their neighbors from different parts of the country, going and teaching them how to use WhatsApp and social media, and sending them the designs to be made in the fabric. And after making or after doing the movie, they take a photograph and send it back to the boutiques of the owners who are really doing the market for their product. So you can also think about creating WhatsApp group to the particular health to in order to bring some challenge to the health group or those who are interested in getting financial literacy and similarly, whatever be the interest of the target group, WhatsApp is really a very effective means of communication for proper channelizing of resources and sharing of resources. The second image is the Facebook initiated by IIT Delhi. And you can see that in a, under this uh, Facebook page, similarly all the events, case studies, success stories will be shared together across the country. If the first WhatsApp group is for a specific region, this Facebook is meant for uh, the entire country. So, any participating institute, some around 8,000 participating institutes are there. Anyone can read the success story, understand how the particular technology has been adopted for the rural area, and can uh, adopt accordingly and can use them effectively. So, Facebook pages helps a lot in connecting with the community. And third one is um, the Twitter page of the Women and Child Development Government. It is an official Twitter page being handled by the uh, concerned persons of that particular department. They share their um, updates, their daily events, everything in that particular page. So that a little sort of transparency is happening in what is happening or what are the activities being carried out by that particular department, who all are the beneficiaries and how the program is looking benefited. So such type of social media help a lot in getting better understanding about the policies and programs being implemented by the government, either be the central government or the state government for the welfare of the masses. The last one is a picture uh, of an Instagram page of the Jungle Park of the government of Kerala. Uh, this uh, screenshot has been taken us back and you can see that the message is written in, uh, and read out the message. Apart from the helpline number 181 to report domestic violence cases at Marcus Women Team, has come up with tips for violence, women facing violence at home. Link in their bio, do the review. 
So this is one of the area where we can really work on using uh, the advantage, taking the advantages and liberty of video conferencing to reach the community. Uh, the video conferencing and the communications happen with the help of a certified ASHA worker only who is in charge of connecting instead of the extension worker, the ASHA worker will be in charge of connecting the uh, medical professionals and the rural nurses together for executing the program. Then coming to the innovating part, the recent trust area in ICT as far as extension education is concerned, the remote sensing technology. So the science of acquiring information about an object without getting into a contact with it. As uh, right now, we used to use the term social distancing. By sensing and recording reflected or entered energy and processing, analyzing and applying that information to the field. So what remote sensing technology exactly do in the field of extension or agriculture or rural development is that it needs, uh, it analyzes the area and gives us all moisture data that helps in determining the quantity of moisture and the nutrient analysis of that particular soil. So this will help the farmer to have a better understanding of his soil and what type of crop has to be grown in that particular soil during a particular season. This will definitely improve productivity and it will also help to detect any crop nutrient deficiency there. And agricultural growth assessment can be made, the crop condition assessment can be made, and detection of crop health and stress. So it definitely will improve the crop in uh, the predictions as well, reduces cost and uh, reduce environmental impact as well. And reduces the cost in a sense that it will be very difficult for the farmer to take the official to the farm and it is a huge uh, process which requires a lot of time to the official need to come and get in touch with the farmer, check the farm, test the field and it's a long process which itself kills all the time for a farmer is concerned. So crop management to maximize returns during harvest time is also very important um, which is a very uh, advantage of remote fencing technology is concerned. So this is a study uh, taken from the research group. Uh, a satellite based assessment of the August 2018 floods in parts of Kerala and India being done by uh, the low spatial technique. And you can, uh, the study also shows that how the flood mapping, drought mapping, research mapping can be done. And the flood declination was in the whole range in the radar data. And how each areas can be identified, the threat areas can be identified, and how effectively it could be protected, and preventive measures could be taken, and how we can equip ourselves with this uh, general alerts. Next is a very interesting part of streaming media because of the podcast, broadcast, and blogs, how effectively we can use them in our farming or extension activity. Broadcast is, uh, as we know, is an episodic series of digital media, audio media files, which are being uploaded in a server, and the person who use that, avails that particular podcast, can automatically download via web syndication to the user's own local computer or mobile phone, and can it it after whenever you have the kind of flexibility is there in getting the data. So students of extension must be familiar with the BBC Six Minute English or the nutritionedition.com site is where the podcasts are available which gives um, with alerts, uh, notifications on post, the audio uh, files are being uploaded on many aspects or topics of nutrition where you can download the file and you can listen later. Similarly, podcast is a video podcast which includes video clips rather than the audio clips. This also reminds me about the other means of communication, ancient means of communication that we use to communicate in uh, the rural areas like the puppet shows, which still are in prevalence, uh, especially when you work with the tribal communities. And also the importance of 
motion pictures and screen shows that we used to have earlier times. And blogs, blogs that you all know, is a personalized web page. You cannot compare the content of a blog with the content writing of a website. Uh, it is a regularly updated personalized web page. And what exactly blogs can do with the communication is or communi extension communication is that you can ask your target audience to write a blog. We, it is a sort of a freedom of expression. You know, the person who do the process, the process is known as blogging, and the person who do blog is known as a blogger. So you can make your audience as a blogger, and you can ask them to write their feedback, their uh, sort analysis, their aspirations about a, the particular event that is happening that you are conducting. So that both of you can some sort of sharing in mutual um, idea or suggestions on how to do the program further and how to carry out the program more effectively. And these are all the interesting parts of pros. As I said earlier, uh, the core part of communication as far as extension is concerned is to be desired changes in the behavior, knowledge and attitude of the target group. That is what we call in a single term behavioral change communication. So, those are the best forms of uh, doing behavioral changes in the communication. And I should applaud at this moment the efforts being taken by the Department of Women and Child of Government of Kerala, especially after the launch of the Ocean Avian program. Uh, and also, they have created a portal called Sambushta Kerala. Uh, and these are all the pictures being taken from the websites of the various ICDS programs being run across the state. I tried a lot of developing tools to reach out to the audience, irrespective of rural urban masses. You can see the first two ads, uh, the first two uh, tools are meant for uh, hand washing techniques and the importance of hand washing. And the uh, really interesting part is that you can use a particular dialogue, a punch dialogue, or a very hardcore dialogue that was very mass at that particular moment, uh, or a very ever, ever remembered dialogue or a scene from the movie which had a greater impact on the box of that particular area. So, there is, uh, I'm sure that the second image will be very familiar with uh, things of all our state who have uh, seen that particular movie. So, the next time when you ask the kid to hand wash, this particular image will appear to them, which definitely will have an impact on them. And the third one is about the how to use green uh, foods after six months and the importance of using Amrita mix developed by the uh, Department of Social Justice, uh, being circulated by the ICBM to Uncle Warriors, and how to use a particular Amrita mix powder and the importance of using that powder as a supplementary feeding or a green feed. So this had a better audience and had a larger impact on the audience for uh, this uh, bringing out behavioral changes in communication. And again, this is an uh, this three act shows the importance of have uh, stripping yourself to the traditional or the locally available means rather than going for the junk foods, which again has Definitely will have an impact along with the, some sort of element of uh, joke or some sort of happiness in seeing these ads. And that uh, sense of being uh, weak feeling creates a positive impact on this type of tools. And um, I urge all the students of extension or design extension. Uh, to really think about the proper integration of information communication technology and how you can effectively use this for doing sustainable interventions for working with community. As we all know, the world is getting digitalized, we are living in a digital era, and especially in Canada, where we claim to be of 7% literate and we are going to find digital literacy as well. So, think about the positive aspects of how we can use this ICT positively and in a better way to work with the community and how those tools, even the tools or the postcards or whatever media that I have discussed, can have a positive impact 
on the small group of population that you select for your study. And these are some of the additional resources and references which you can later look into and have more insight on this.